Hello everyone, welcome back. Uh, today I have a special guest on the show, uh, Jake DiBattista. Uh, known Jake for oh, at least a decade, probably, through Warhammer. And we are going this weekend to a team tournament, uh, the Wicked Dicey Spring Retreat in Massachusetts, together, uh, where Jake is going to be our illustrious captain. Um, Jake, do you want to say anything for yourself in introduction? No, just uh, it's nice to be on the show after commenting on every single video. Up to yes, I should I'm say, I should say you are my most fervent and wonderful supporter because you comment on every single video so that the algorithm is like, hey, Ricky's cool, and I appreciate it. Uh, that's great. Um, sure. Let's see. So, yeah. Intro for the event, uh, it's five-person teams, which I've never done before. Um, we've both done ATC, which was four-person teams. Um, so that is a little interesting to me. The pairing process is just a little bit different. Um, I should say this is being organized by Corey McKinney, Brad Bittler, and Miles Kavarik. So thanks to all of them. Uh, I've heard it's a good time. We're hoping it's a good time. <laughs> I'm sure it will be. Um, food and drinks were included for this, which is awesome and interesting uh as well as lodging we could have camped or stayed in like dorm rooms uh still might. This, like camp thing hmm? still might camp we <laughs> that's true if we get there and there's no room in the dorms maybe we should uh maybe we should pack a tent just in case you never know <laughs> i'm bringing a sleeping bag to sleep on the on the dorm cots or whatever so a tent wouldn't be that far-fetched uh but yeah okay. there's there's 10 teams, uh, it's four rounds, so it is Fountains of Frost, uh, Frigid Zephyr, I like that in the pack they, they have the maps, is nice. Um, every step is forward and limited resources. Um, seems a little more skewed towards like more objectives. Um, Zephyr is three, every step forward I guess is pretty low too with four and you kind of start on them anyway um but then we I'm have two, two six kind of yeah <laughs> that's true they go away yeah. they go away yeah um yeah i like the pack i feel like frigid zephyr i don't know if that like cut down on the number of like shooty lists there's still a couple of ko and like we're bringing cool boys but yeah, originally in that spot, there was Towers of Tundra. And I know a lot of people were annoyed because I guess that got rolled up last year. Mm -hmm. uh, and for only four rounds, I don't know if it's uh, it makes sense. Maybe if it was like a six round, I could see Towers making more sense. I like can ETC. Yeah. Style, but... I hate Towers. And I am I feel like if Towers was in here, we would have seen some King Broad Stomp, which I don't want to see because it's horrible. <laughs> I've yeah. complained about it before. Um, so yeah, I, I don't know. I think it's a good pack. Plays. Yeah, yeah. It's also interesting. Everyone plays the same mission every round. I've seen it uh, at ATC. I think it was that way too. Yes, like uh, there were well, instead of having A B missions. Yeah, exactly. And I think National Team Tournament did it also, but uh, I, I don't know if you know if if getting ready for Worlds, it makes more sense to have the double map, or if this is more mm -hmm. just fun teams. Um, I like team tournaments, so I'm open to any format that they're willing to experiment with, but. Yeah, yeah, big same. Um, I've said before, I think Teams is like peak Warhammer. <laughs> um, yeah. And I guess not having an AB mission does keep like the pairing a little bit simpler. And it's a little less to think about. Speed it up a little bit. Um, yeah, but with five games, I guess, too, it's like then you would have three on one board, two on the other. I guess if you had like six or four, that might make more right. sense, too. Yeah. Or we have five different missions every round. <laughs> that would be chaos. Yeah, exactly. Um, so what is what is your history of going to team tournaments? Uh, so, like I said, I went to ATC uh, two years. Um, I think you went both times I went as well, right? Yep. Yeah. And uh, before that, I did Malfo teams. I actually went to Europe for that, which was a lot of fun, twice uh, in Manchester. And uh, before that, I would go to the Bragging Rights team tournament, which was in Connecticut, not too far from this venue, actually, maybe like yep. an hour away. At the Connecticut. Yeah, so... Yeah, in Hartford. Hartford, exactly. So... You know, that was my kind of experience. And again, my buddy Jacob now is on the world's team. And before that, in eighth edition, Travis, Jarrett, Larry, Gern, you know, a lot of my friends would do the team format because, you know, it just it adds another layer to the, to the event in 
yeah. a, a layer of camaraderie too, or you know, teamsmanship that that I really sure. like. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. I agree. And it does. Yep. I I I feel like like people obviously take it seriously still, but I feel like it's. I don't know. I feel like it's a step less sweaty and try hard than like a singles event might be because there is that like team camaraderie like portion of it. I mean, everybody in AOS is generally pretty nice, but I feel like that gets like bumped up one notch at team tournaments for some whatever reason. Yeah, and like as a team, you can like, do like kind of a fun theme. Like I know uh, during the last tournament, all everyone on his team played corn because in Nashville there wasn't a restriction on. Um... If you faction. Could do the same faction, only yeah. if you could take the same war scroll. So right. you do fun stuff like that. You can get really skewy. All four of you play shooting and like just eat one bad matchup. Um, in a five man, I think it's harder to do some of that. Um, but as you see, I think some of the teams went really aggro. So I don't know if that was the pack or just because this is the end of AOS. So screw it, we're in the woods and we're drinking. Yeah, I, I, I don't have a good read on like how, how much teams are focused on like fun versus winning for this like we obviously you know winning is nice we would like to win but i don't know that we're try harding to the max we're, we're maybe we're like 70 percent try harding and we kind of had that discussion beforehand of like hey are we going to like drink and have fun or do we want to try and win and i felt like that discussion we were a little wishy-washy and we kind of landed on we're gonna try and win and see how the first round goes and like if we just get wrecked <laughs> and then we can turn to drinking mode um yeah and i think that's smart because atc i think we had like an a b and a c team and then obviously nashville back in february my buddy jacob like they sent like eight worlds players and they mm -hmm. were in two squads of four so going into the event i just knew i was with like josh hankin my buddy jared hengel like we were more definitely the fun team so you know you can kind of set more realistic expectations take certain lists to kind of cater to that as well in a team tournament you know and Right. You can still win games because you can still pair into a good matchup. You know, at the end of the day, that one of you is going to at least get a win. So. Yeah, indeed. Um, speaking of worlds, you, you had mentioned like this compared to the world worlds format and stuff. Um, I don't. Do I even know who's on the worlds team this year, other than like Jacob and the obvious names? Anyway, the the point is, is do you know is anybody coming to this like on the worlds team? Uh, well, my bet I think Miles, who I met at Everwinter, is on the Ireland team. So I know for sure he's coming to this. And then nice. I think I saw Sam Gould on this. He was on uh, Worlds, but no, I don't think the Trent Nellies or Jacob or, yeah. you know, any of the obvious people, Zach, any of them are coming to this event. Um, I yeah. think it could be a really good event because this is actually the first time I've seen the pairing system used. That's the mm -hmm. exact same as Worlds, where mm -hmm. it's like you not you put out an attacker, two defenders come across, and you pair accordingly. At ATC and NashCon, they used kind of the old bragging rights pack which was a, it's just a different pairing system so i think it's it's kind of cool to see this too and, and yeah. play around with this it's my first time doing it same um yeah so that said i i pulled up on the um on the stream i have the pairings um process pulled up so now it's probably a good time to talk about that um so basically with five people both teams are going to select one army the attacker and put it face down on the table and you're both going to reveal that so like we might put out steve with cruel boys or something and the opponent might put out night haunt whatever um so then once you've seen the other team's attacking army you pick two to send across and they do the same so once you've sent your two armies across um i guess the one is the defender whatever attacker defender it doesn't matter <laughs> you each pick one you see the ones you pick two to send them across. So then out of the two that the other team sent to the one that you revealed, you pick one of those two to face the one that you revealed initially. And then you send the other team or the other player back. Um, so at that point you've set two matches, right? So each team that was revealed initially, or sorry, each player that was revealed initially by each team, their matchup is set. So now there's three players left. So you do the same thing again. Um, so each team reveals one person. Am I saying? Am I also chime in if I get something wrong? No, no. I mean, <laughs> this I is new to me. To, yeah, yeah. The easiest so, way to explain. But then it you do the same match. thing. Yeah. So, so, so the easiest way to explain it is if each player is one through five. So player one is like slaves. Two is gets. Three is beasts. Whatever. Um, 
each team puts out a player. So team one puts out player one, team two puts out player one. Then let's say two and three from each team grow across. And team one who, who put out player one can select to play two or three. So let's say one's versus two over here and one versus two over here. Then you just do that exact same thing again. So now maybe uh, three goes out and three goes out. They can now choose to play four or five. So three plays four, three plays four, and then fives would play each other because they're all that's left. That's the easiest way to kind of explain it without getting in, into there the weeds go. I found. Yeah. There you go. I, I, I like the numbers. The numbers are good. Yeah. You were just you were just looking at me like I was getting something wrong, and I was like, "Oh no, I'm panicking." It's now. just hard to explain. And <laughs> it is kind of like once you. <laughs> it is. I feel like that's the best way to do it. And and I actually completely misunderstood it the first time I read it too. I was thinking yeah. for some reason I was thinking in my head each round of, of revealing was setting one match, and so you would have to do that like five times, four times. Yeah. And I was like, "Oh no, wait, the yeah, math. It's hard." On each side. Yeah, right. there's one on each side. So you set two, and then you set two, and then whatever that is left over plays each other. So, yeah, um, there's, yeah, so there's a little bit of strategy in terms of, like, what do you reveal? Like, do you reveal, you know, I, my, my assumption, you either reveal something that has one red matchup that you're trying to avoid. So you can be like, oh, here's the thing you can set, even if you send over the red matchup, we'll pick the other one. Um, or you, I don't know, maybe you just reveal something that's good into anything. So you don't care what they send over. Um, yeah. What are your feelings about that? Yeah, I mean, looking at what they kind of did last year at Worlds, you know, there's a couple ways to do it. You can take a list like zombies, right? You know, 160 zombies. There's not many things in the game that 160 zombies doesn't want to play, right? So you could mm -hmm. comfortably lead with that and be like, hey, give us any two armies. Zombies doesn't care. And maybe we pick one of the two armies that our other team fears. So let's say my team really doesn't want to play against lizards. I could lead off with zombies, and then if Wizards comes across, I could try and get rid of them. That's kind of one approach, is to, like, suck sure. away things. Uh, another approach is, like you said, like, say you are you have a player who's playing Stonehorns, and the other team has five armies that suck against Stonehorns. You could lead with them and just be like, hey, you know, maybe Stonehorns has one bad matchup and four good ones. You have to give us now one bad, one good. We're just going to take the one good. So the the strategy in that, you know, because you're doing this process, you know, for a five man team twice, but for an eight man team, it's happening like six or seven times. Right. Is like each round you get the opportunity to either, you know, put up an army who's guaranteed to have one good, you know, in the left in the pool or an army mm -hmm. that's trying to maybe suck out uh, a, a bad per se from the rest of your team. So right. there's a lot of ways to do it. Yep. Um, yeah, I feel like I overthink the pairings possibilities a lot and just like outthink myself and then do something stupid <laughs> like an ATC. Yeah. Um, it's, you know, I'm going to worlds this year and I can't, you know, just mm -hmm. as a solo player, like to play singles and I can't wait to just kind of see like round five, round six, maybe just like some of the top teams, how they're doing pairings, just like mm -hmm. watch it unfold and just kind of see like how that math's done. Cause it is, it is actually a whole nother game on right. top of the, the thing, you know? <laughs> yep. Yeah, I'm looking forward to watching some of the streams. It should be interesting. Um, yeah. And I will say, what like, what are my team's first ATC, because I wasn't on your team, um, one of the things we really, like, did that was kind of silly was we had one, like, hard counter to Seraphon, and we're like, haha, we're going to, like, try and trap the Seraphon in that matchup. And, like, it never happened, because, like, the Seraphon, like, they, can, they know that's the one hard counter to the Seraphon, and the rest of our armies just get blown up by Seraphon, so they just, you know, they pair to avoid that, and... Like, if you really want to trap an army, you kind of need two armies that that's a green matchup. Otherwise, like, they can just avoid it. Like, you need multiple... If you're trying to trap... If you're trying to catch an army, you need multiple armies that destroy that army. You don't... You can't right. one, because you can avoid one. 100% agree. And, and, like, for example, I think that with our team comp this year, I'm not kind of doing any spoilers. I think three of the lists are more of those all-comers, like most of the the field going to be neutral versus them matchup wise mm -hmm. and then we did take two skewy lists that i think have multi you know kind of similar things they're really good versus and kind of do the same strategy so that we can kind of force some of those traps out i think that that's yep. kind of uh was the smarter way to approach it this year than you know maybe in previous years where we had one skew and four neutral and that doesn't really work yeah for sure so yeah. let's go over that's a good segue uh our team's lists so we are the war dogs which is a reference to some occurrence, some some old lore of our friend group, which I was not present for. Um, I think it's a biker gang. 
<laughs> right? Are the war dogs a biker? I, I, I wasn't there either. Oh, you weren't there either. There. Oh my god! Yeah, there was some sort of a cabin, and at this cabin, there was a biker gang that had a funny interaction. Nothing negative, nothing you know mm-hmm. uh, malicious, but it, yeah, was, right. it was kind of funny. So fun. All right, so going down the lists, um, I can just talk about you know my my quick thoughts on my list, and we can you know we can uh, talk about the other three. You can talk about yours, etc. The obvious. Um, so I'm playing Slaves, which I've, is what I've been focusing on lately. Um, I'm still doing Cabalists. Um, I should mention there was no duplications. Oh my god, I can't talk today. <laughs> Great when you're streaming. Um, no duplications between lists on your team for uh, enhancements, like GHB enhancements, artifacts, um, spells, etc. Command traits. Um, and I think we could, I think you could double up on the same grand strat, but you couldn't take it more than twice. Um, so that means only one, you know, only one, uh, member of the team can take Blizzard or Shaman of the Chilled Lands. Um, I have both figuring that I have the chance to 3d6 cast with Cabalists and probably the best chance to get off Blizzard and that sort of thing. Um, so I've got my Karkadrak of Nurgle, uh, with the crown to turn off. Um, little things contesting objectives and blizzard um i'm not gonna like talk too much about this because i've talked about basically this whole list on my stream before um the demon prince the sorcerer lord chariot of nurgle two by ten warriors of nurgle the unmade uh, this was a switch up because i'd been running uh corvus cabal and i just feel like i never use them well and i would rather just have a screen on the board to start <laughs> i don't have to worry about remembering to bring it down later um, and they can also turn off redeploy and rally, which is very nice um, to get like the chosen into something more reliably, because uh, you don't have to worry about redeploy. Uh, so then the good old standard ten chosen of Slanesh with the banner, and the thing I switched up for this tournament is I finally caved and I have six Baron Guard of Corn with the yeah. Fell Spears. Smart I, man. Yeah, I played one practice game with it and I was like, yeah, these do these do smash pretty well. Uh, so I took out. To get that in, I took out the Chaos Lord on foot and the um, the Ten Knights. So I swapped out the Lord on foot for the Knights, or and the Knights for the Vanguard. Um, so that means the Sorcerer Lord is now the Slaughter or the uh, Spellcasting Savant that I have to keep alive. So he's a little less durable, but in the tournament, the GT I played in, um, the things that got the Chaos, like the things that would have gotten the Sorcerer Lord, got the Chaos Lord anyway. So I'm not too worried about that. Uh, so then we've got your list. So for my list, uh, just a note, we are playing before the most recent FAC, which I think did hurt uh, Seraphon and Corn a little bit. So um, for my list, my approach to it was looking at the battle pack, win-loss is the first thing that matters. So uh, the most important thing is that every round, uh, if you have, you have five matchups, right, there's five people to, per team, is that you get three wins. That's the most important thing every round for, for scoring is player wins. So uh, I wanted to, you know, play a list that could first off matchup wise kind of play into those things. And then second of all, obviously uh, win, but it doesn't have to be a big win because uh, there we're not battle points at the final tiebreaker, not the first. So differential didn't seem to matter mm-hmm. as much as it had in previous tournaments uh, I've played in where, you know, the teams, you know, an 18 point, you know, an 18 two win sure, yeah. determined the, the round. Right. Yep. Um, so I originally wanted to play Soulblade. Uh, my team kind of convinced me out of it. I wanted to use one of the new battalions. Their new regiments are renowned. Um, however, the points did change. So we are including those regiment point changes. So I kind of uh, pivoted back to what I knew, which was Gloom Spike Gits. Um, I'm not playing as much right now just because 4 is coming out. So I'm mostly just painting and mm-hmm. kind of playing some other stuff. But uh, so, I, but I have played like probably over a hundred games with Gits, you know, in this edition. So it's not something I really need to practice much with. Yeah, which was good. And you've gone what, like four one at a GT with them? You've like yeah, done with, well with them as couple, well. Yeah, yeah, two or three GTs I've gone four one with them, and then nice. um, Beast of Chaos is the other army four one. So um, I was contemplating Beast as well, but I also didn't want to fly with my armies. Um, especially big armies. So my friend Josh Hankin, who lives in Massachusetts, said you can borrow my Gits army. And made the decision super easy. Perfect. Um, so anyways, for my Gits list, I kind of saw the Adepticon list, and there was this guy, Michael Rakush, who I'm in a American team practice Discord with. Um, 
and I saw that he was running a bunch of Stabas uh, as well with the Wound Boss, and I thought that was interesting. So I built a list with two box of 40 Stabas as kind of the core with the Wound Boss to kind of buff them up occasionally to do some mortals. Um, after that, I just was debating whether I wanted to play Squig Herds or Bounders, and I decided that Bounders would be better for like being able to contest on these multiple objective boards. Yeah, yeah being fast uh, is nice. Right. Right, so um, I went with the Bounders, and uh, after List came out, I, I don't know if it's going to be the right call. I think I think Herds is going to be really good in this tournament, just because everyone's playing melee. But um, Bounders should, you know, are always mobile and fast. Um, after that, I decided not to take Scragrot. I've always taken Scragrot, but I kind of wanted to try something new, so I took the Trogoth um, Lord, the the character Trogoth, yep, the Dankold. Um Yeah, and gave him the four up ward and the monster keyword. Uh, command trait and the purpose behind that was that uh, he can be my general and, and get me an easy grand strategy so as long as the 80 block or the 80 goblins can hold down maybe one or two objectives yep. and the squig bounders can go you know do my tactics that's kind of the core of the list everything else is just a little support hero or gobble so yep. uh, that's that's kind of it in a nutshell 20 bounders 80 uh, gets an, a general that's going to stay alive with some small heroes and gobble so yep. hoping that will and three fell well waters Three fell waters. And three too. fell waters, yeah, to fill out the core, just yeah. to kind of <laughs> make it easier for the, you know, with God Palooza and the Stabas and them. It's like Ren 2, so that's not bad. Yeah. So. Cool. Yeah, no, I like it. Yeah. I, I, I like the 2 by 40 Stabas. I found that, like, yeah. I can kill 20 Stabas, but the barb nets are always just super annoying with the minus yep. one to hit. Barb net plus God Palooza spell, you're going to be a minus two to hit. So in theory, I think it's it's a pretty tar pity type list that still yep. has a hammer behind it to go do stuff. Yeah. All right, so moving on, Nick Jackson um, is playing Stormcast Eternals. And Nick, uh, I think, is as excited about fishing as he is about playing Warhammer. Uh, so he's he's bringing this is like a very dirty list, but he's bringing it because it also doesn't require any thinking. <laughs> I mean, you know, all armies require some thinking, but it requires very little thinking. So he's like, sweet, I'm gonna drink and fish, and happen to play four games of Warhammer as well. Um, so he's got the Mortal Wound Bomb Stormcast with uh, three Night Vexilors, two Judicators, and then seven units of two up save Shield Annihilators. Plus the Everblaze Comet. So it's just all the mortal wounds a girl could ask for. Uh, dropping on your face. Uh, I'm still I'm still a little surprised that this, this list isn't the um, doesn't run the Lord Imperitant just to get one unit dropping down within seven. But like I guess it doesn't really matter. You're just trying to blow things up landing on them. <laughs> and maybe get a nine inch charge off. Um, so that's Nick. Uh, then our friend Steve is playing Cruel Boys. Um, so this is the current jacob list essentially <laughs> it's the last thing jacob yep. played what you played yep with gobsprack three shamans the sludge raker uh two by ten gut rippers ten hobgrats to fill out battle line and then the stab lads and three by six bolt boys so this is the gun line portal wound nonsense that's just gonna blow some people up and this yep. is probably the one yeah, right. Can't be seen outside of twelve. So this is probably the one that we're like trying the hardest to get into a matchup that it can just blow something up, right? Yeah, and I don't think you have to try very hard. It has very <laughs> few bad matchups, and the ones yep. that did aren't too populous. So it's uh, it's him and him and Nick. If you couldn't figure out, are definitely the skewless on our team. Yes. Um, yeah. Yeah, I feel like Starborn fucks up Cruel Boys. Yeah. But other than that, like it's just gonna blow things up. And I, I, I guess he, not being seen outside of 12, there's still play there. Uh, yeah. But that's probably the one thing he'd be worried about. And then we have our other buddy, John, um, who's playing Flesh Eater Quartz. Um, he, like, just built this list in the last month and a half, probably. New Fet came out, and he was just like, sweet, this looks awesome. Um, he has not played a ton recently, but I know he got a game or two in the last couple weeks to practice for this. Um, so he's playing Usheron... Gormain, an arch regent, uh, two arch regents actually, uh, and the Vargulf courtier, courtier. Uh, then he's got two by six crypt horrors, three crypt horrors, and then two by five crypt guard. So, bunch of crypt horrors and Usheron essentially, um, which should be fun. Mm -hmm. 
This is in Hollow Morn. I forget which one. I, I assume Hollow Morn is the night one, since Cryptors are all knights. But yeah, so just a good all around feck list. Um, I don't know that Ujuran is the strongest thing in the world, but he's a cool model and it's fun, and we're all here to have fun. <laughs> yes, we are. Um, and again, it's the end of an edition, so I think everyone yeah, right. kind of had that sort of mentality when I looked at the list for this event. Um, so, yes. And I'm just glad to have these five guys out there. And Absolutely. The yeah. Yep. No, it's going to be a good time. And and yeah, like between, I feel like I feel like fourth info really started to hit between when we signed up for this and like now, and like the general, just the general level of seriousness and drive to play third is is decreasing by the day <laughs> as fourth comes upon us. Um, so this will be a good send off to the edition because I don't think. There's a GT in May nearby at Tables and Towers, but I'm not going to be able to go to that. So this will probably be my like last tournament for, for third. Yeah, I think I'm going to do Worlds. So we'll see if that stays third. Right, it's you did say that. June, but yeah. uh, I, besides that, I, I I can't see myself doing a tournament in May. Yeah. So I think uh, unless there's like an RTT here in Charleston, South Carolina, um, yeah. I'll probably just finish up getting... All my gets painted and ready for fourth edition because that's been a project I've been working on for like two years now, and this yeah. year's Nova. I'm gonna get a display board, all that stuff. So <sighs> the Wario, the Wario gets, love it. Yeah, the Wario or War, Waluigi themed gets. Waluigi, actually. sorry, yeah, Waluigi. Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, yeah. I'm also trying to just like clear off my painting desk, my backlog <laughs> in prep for yeah. buying more new things, of course. Um, yeah. So yeah, so as you said, the the two skew lists are. The Stormcast and, and Cruel Boys and John's Feck and R2 lists uh, are kind of more just all comers, decent against everything. Um, yeah. The one thing that's interesting is, like you said, Frigid Zephyr is in the pack. So we were considering Cruel Boys becoming Beast of Chaos, which in some ways is kind of a, a skew list too. Um, because it, it stays all in ambush, kind of like the Stormcast. So they would kind of probably pair similarly. Mm -hmm. Um, with how pairings came out, I think it's it's probably okay that we did the way we did. Um, probably better, honestly. Uh, obviously, Zephyr, we're going to have to be a little bit careful with that. But um, besides that, I think most of the missions are pretty pretty neutral for the most part. Uh, limited resources, again, is also a little anti-gun line because you have to move off the points as you siphon. But right. I think I think Cruel Boys um, is kind of okay in that because you know yeah. they usually are able by turn three or four anyways if they're sure. match up. And and they want they want to be you know moving for them is fine. They want to be moving into short range with the bolt boys too. So like they're kind of a mobile gun line, not a static castle necessarily. Um, for sure. So yeah, I think that's fine. Um, so yeah, maybe we can just go through. We can at least go through like what the other factions are. We don't necessarily have to do all the lists in detail. Um, yeah, maybe we can go back and forth like picking one or two. Sure. Yeah. I'll. I mean, honestly, let's see. We've only been talking for 28 minutes. <laughs> we probably have time yeah. to go through all the lists if you uh, don't want to get back to Baldur's Gate right away. No, no, I'm in no rush to, to go back. I, I, I told the group I wouldn't be back tonight, so I got Great. Time. All right, all right. So, may, yeah, maybe we can just uh, swap off, like, going through the lists, and if we have any, like, big thoughts, we can chime in. Um, I, can, I can start with D6 Inches Unbuffed. I don't, I don't know if I've ever met the team in person, but I know I've seen pictures of their shirts online and i was not terribly amused <laughs> i'm gonna be honest um really? have, have, you, have you seen their shirts no it's like it's oh, like there it's it's a dick it's a dick shirt it's like the d6 is the balls and it's like unbuffed is the shaft and i'm just like we we didn't really need that did we i don't know i don't know we're it's... in the woods at the end of the day but yeah it's <laughs> yes backer. yeah it's just it's it's not it's not my favorite vibe to be bringing um, as we try and be, ex I almost said exclusive, inclusive and friendly in our in our hobby. I don't know. feels a little, I don't know, slightly off. I, I'm not mad about it. It's just not my favorite. Um, yeah. So anyway, after that commentary, I'm sure they're all wonderful people. We'll find out. I don't know. Maybe they're total, maybe they're total douchebags. Who knows? <laughs> we'll find out. I, I, um, I hope we play them. Again, there's like 10 teams total, right? And uh, it's four rounds. So I suspect yeah. that we'll play about half a field. And, yeah, right. You know, a few six inches unbuffed is, 
it's, it's getting buffed. Maybe they'll play this, but if not, they're going to be on those scrub tables. I don't know. <laughs> this, is, sure. this is going in the Trash Talk channel of um, the Discord for the event. Jake said he was going to post the, the link to this when, once it's up, so we got to Trash Talk a little bit. Um, anyway, so their lists. Um, Justin is playing Night Haunt. It's the Scarlet Doom um, with Double Cruciator, Double Spirit Torment, a Guardian of Souls. And then he's got 15 Hex Wraiths and 40 Blade Geists and five of the little crossbow dudes and he also has the purple sun and it looks like it's all in a two drop um it's night haunt it's gonna do night haunt he thinks um daniel is playing their slaves in host of the ever chosen he has double sorcerer lord um good old nurgle demon prince and he's the monster uh command trait for that and then he's also got an ogroid myrmidon which i think well I don't really understand, other than that he's a cool model. It might just be he's a cool model, um, because he didn't need the Theradons in the battle line slot. So he's got six Theradons of corn, which I have wanted to love so badly and think suck <laughs> after trying them. It could just be me that sucks, so we'll see. Um, he is a true mensch and has 2x10 chosen, which I love, um, as somebody who's tried to play 3x10 chosen. <laughs> um, one is corn and one is Nurgle, both with the uh, special banners. And he's got a Chariot of Corn, which I think is strictly worse than a Nurgle Chariot because it's got, like, four terrible attacks that you don't care about getting plus one of, but whatever. Um, eight Iron Golems and six Furies. Then we've got Lucas with KO. Um, with the 8,000 things that KO have, their codes and amendments and yada yada, and I don't know what they all do, so who cares. Uh, but he's got a Navigator and an Admiral. He's got two Arcanaut companies, a frigate, an ironclad, six engine riggers, three engine riggers, and ten thunders. Um, I don't know. I'm not super worried about this, just because I think KO has finally taken enough point hikes that like there's just not as much to them anymore. Um, yeah. And this I mean, one still is. The most, they're still the most winning army in Warhammer. So that's fair. The... They do have brain dead tactics still. Yeah. Um... This one definitely is uh, pretty much, it seems like, probably the Thunders are going the Frigate and then Riggers and the Ironclad, if I had to guess, but it, it looks like pretty mm -hmm. much... I think the opposite. Five units. Oh, okay. The opposite, because the I would think I would think the 600 Riggers are going in the Frigate, because the Frigate, when you charge in and drop things out, they get strike first, and the oh, Riggers right. are your fighty guys. So You can put all nine on a Frigate, right? Nine can, to nine can attach to it? Yeah, you, you, yeah, I think so. Uh, um, so he probably, probably jams that in, and then he just follows up with the Iron Crads with the Thunders to kind of finish off whatever's alive. It's not yeah. bad. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see. Um, it's just it's less, way, it it's less scary noted, than not, it used to be. <laughs> you're not saying battalions, but essentially everyone in this tournament is just a one or a two drop. Is another thing that I should probably we should probably just call. Yeah, that's a good game. call. Yeah, that's that's um, fair. Because battalions were not limited one per team. Right. So like I'm a four drop. I took battalion plus my goblins are all in uh, wizards finders, and I think you're a one or a two drop too. Yeah, right? I'm a two. No team I'm, I'm two all. drops. Because yeah. I have I had one. My chariot wouldn't fit the battle ridge, so I'm a two drop. Yeah, and this right. like the slaves list. The night haunt was a two drop. The slaves list is uh, it's got Million a drop. It's got a command entourage and then a one drop, so it's a four drop. Yeah. Um, the KO is one drop, I think. The then we've got sorry. <laughs> then the last list. No, nope, second to last list on this team. It's five people teams. Um, uh, is an Iron Jaws list uh, with the War Chanter, Mega Boss, another War Chanter, Shaman, ten Brutes, two by six Gruntas, and six Brute Ragers. Um, so it's just Iron Jaws doing Iron Jaws things. Um, that is also a one drop. Oh, nope, it's a two drop because he's got too many heroes. I lied. Um, 1940 points. I w so in addition to the drops, I was also a little surprised that I would be getting the triumph in a lot of these matches. Um, there's a lot of people with less than... Sorry. Um, I meant 1980 or 1990, and there's a lot of people that are right on the nose with 2000, is what I was trying to say. Um, and then last but not least uh, is Will with Flesh Eater Quartz, with Double Arch Regent, Agor Warden, um, one of each of the, like... Uh, Cryptor level heroes, um, so the Flayer one and the Cryptor one. 40 ghouls, 2 by 6 Cryptors, and 6 Crypt Flayers, as well as 10 Royal Beast Flayers. 
This one is in... This one's lots of drops. It's got Acolytes and a Command Entourage. So that's just like 10 drops. Um, yeah, I don't know. That's a solid list. So Yeah, it was it was the person on our team that got Blizzard too, and it gave it to both Blizzard, uh, or both mages, yep. which I thought was smart. Um, I don't know if we said at the beginning. You, you could repeat Battalions, but not Enhancements. So yeah, I did say that one once. Blizzard, list per team. Okay, cool. Uh, but one list could have multiple of it, so that's kind of interesting yep. to see three lore of the Primal Frost, Blizzard, Blizzard, Horror Frost for this guy. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it's a very... I, I feel like it's kind of similar to our team. Like, it's got the one shooty list in the KO, but it's not even, mm -hmm. like, max shooty KO. I don't know. I mean, Andrew Drake is shoot, but it's shorter ranged. Uh, and yeah. then, you know, a bunch of melee grindy stuff. I'm interested stuff. in the double... Um chosen block i feel like that's something that i've in theory liked before but it's just such a slow big footprint that gets tagged and dies sometimes when that's the only yep. threat but it does have the theradons too right so it's it'll be interesting i think the thing that surprises me a little bit about that is that one of them is not the slash chosen just because it helps it it helps so much to be able to run in charge with one of your chosen blocks if you're taking two mm -hmm. i mean it helps even if you're taking one, but it I it surprises me that the the second one is corn instead of Slanesh. Um, I'll be interested to see. You took an early imprint, so did he. If yep. the new like rules for basically turning off bodyguard with a turn off ignore wards comes into play, I played a couple games with the zombie dragon, and mm -hmm. you know just thinking that would be a big deal, um, and it just didn't end up being that big of a deal yep. um, when it's a heroic action and all just kind of a situational range. But yep. I'm interested to see how that plays out. Yep it it the, when i've played it it's come up it's come up rarely and then one or two of the times when it could have been useful i didn't play it well <laughs> yeah. so we'll see um something like seraphon where like the Saurus guard are trying to bodyguard the heroes could could potentially help with that it's so often that the key thing gets into the thing with the ward saver with the bodyguard and like turns it off at the right time. There's like just so many because your opponent knows that obviously it's what you're trying to do. Right, you're right? trying to so, screen it out. And yeah, it's not like right. they'll just let you get in there and do it for free. Exactly. So if it's like a core part of the strategy, yeah. You yeah. Know. All right. You want to go through the Dung Kings? Yeah, Jam. I've actually uh, been to a tournament with I think a couple times. I've seen his name. It's a very memorable name. Um, he's taking uh, OBR. Um, this OBR is exactly the same as Madigan's list, who's later in here, and I don't know what the sh if they coordinated or not, but it's basically Archon and Catacros with Nos Effector, um, and then a Soul Reaper, two blocks of three Immortus Guard, some Death Riders, uh, a Min Archai unit, and that's it. It's it's a very tight list. Um, yeah, it's very late on bodies. Yeah, and it's in Praetorians, so. I think it could be good in like a brawly game, but I'm not quite sure if it has the bodies or the objective running. Yeah, um, it it worries me. It worries me just because like you can like things can get through three mortis guard, right? Things can pop three mortis guard. Whereas if you have one unit of six, I feel like that's super hard to pop. And like I love my two morgas archai, but like it's not as scary as four archai, right? It's not like he's got the big unit that's getting big deal. It is, and he's, and it's not like he's got the four that's getting plus one attack from like the Leech Cavallos and things like that. So it just seems, right. and I mean, there there's tactics that can do. You've got the Death Rider tactic, you've got the Mortis Guard plus a Mortisan tactic. So it's got a couple book tactics, but like it's it's so light on bodies. Like I don't see how it wins on primary objectives at all. Right, so, like round one we'll with see. the six objectives, this list I feel like is is definitely going to struggle. Um, just yeah. just on the mission alone. Um, cool. I, I spent time on that just because there's been a lot. Another one, uh, Josh Hankin, my buddy, former teammate. Oh, this he's is Josh doing, Hankin. Oh shit. Yeah, and he's doing this list. I think it's it's INF Deacon themed ogres. Um, so they're all riding stuff, which is neat. Fun. Um, so he has Kragnos, Stonehorn, Icebrow Hunter, uh, uh unit of a uh, Stonehorn Beast uh, Rider, two Sabers, uh, a block of Noblars, and a block of Gorgers. So, um, Frost Lord, that's super awesome, as we all know. Uh, yep. With Kragnos, I mean, that's two legit hammers that can just run into things, yep. so it'll be solid. Um, and also giving the other Stonehorn 3d6 charge from Kragnos. Yeah, yeah, super good. Um, and then after that, another Orc list. 
Iron Jaws, this one has Mega Boss. It's got two small units of Four Gruntas. Um, it's high drops with Wizard Finders and the Iron Jaws Fist. Um, so nothing too crazy there. Hold on, I, I want to go back to Josh's list for just for a second, because yeah, I'm yeah. like, I'm like, I'm looking at this and I'm like, I feel like this is a Josh is drinking all weekend list. It yeah. <laughs> is just like my yeah. first impression, and then, but I just know, I just know that magical things happen when junk drunk Josh plays Warhammer. And he's just going to go up to somebody and be like, I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. Kragnos and these things are going to charge you. And Kragnos is going to roll 47 mortals on your thing, on your monster or something. And then your army's going to explode. And he's going to like, roll the dice. And it's going to be exactly what happens. And it, everyone's going to be like, what? how did this happen? I don't understand. So yeah, the last, the last to me, time this I list doesn't Josh, look that good, but I know he's going to like make it work somehow. <laughs> 100%. The last time I played Josh, he was playing Big Wah, and he was down i would say a little bit in the game and he's like all right first thing i'm gonna do the ooga booga ooga booga did like 40 mortal wounds killed my general i was like <laughs> awesome and now he's like i'm gonna roll blizzard i had like four primal dice to his like one he of course got the double six and then blizzarded off like 20 squigs and i'm like <laughs> all right good game good game yep. nice yeah so that's that's definitely the josh dial but yeah this is yep. definitely josh's drinking 30 beers this weekend type of list <laughs> All right. Anyway, um, you're saying the work lands, the works, the Iron Gels. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's an Iron Gels list. Nothing yep. too crazy. Uh, after that, Sylvanesque he, he does, list. He does have the Malgrunta. I have not seen the Malgrunta in action. I, I'm under the impression it's not that good, but props for bringing it. I own one. I might convert it to be something, but nice. I'm not. I've never played it as a Mall Crusher. But, <laughs> um, but I'm I'm cheering for him. Go Malgrunta. Um, go Big Pig. We have a Sylvanesque list with Heartwood. This is uh, Belthanos, which is great. Um and it's in the reapening uh he has a branch rave he has uh, two units of hunters with bows and then one unit with scythe a unit of lancers uh reinforced it looks like and then he has spite swarm hive so again yep. uh, this team's definitely between orcs josh this list um we're it's a lot of just we're gonna shove yeah this and... is this is a run in and smash team <laughs> yeah yeah go omar i like it i like belfinus i think that that's a fun list mm -hmm. um and then lastly, I guess someone on their team's a try hard playing LRL. It's, <laughs> it's freaking uh, try hards. Such a try hard. And of course, he's the guy that got Blizzard on his team, and he has three instances of it one Ugh. with the Cathalar and then two with the Calgrave. Yep. He's got Severith. And two or like Frost. Yeah. And then he's got Severith with the. Uh, just, I hate Severith. He's so yeah. annoying. No, he's so fast and obnoxious. Yeah, and auto charging. Um, he's got a big block of Wardens with speed of Hish. Uh, two units of Blade Lords, two units of Dawn Riders. Um, so I suspect that this list is going to kind of kite you a little bit. There's yeah. some Blizzards around um, and just and the, super efficient. Is the Twin Stones the spell that like helps dispel? Is that what that one is? Hishian Twin Stones. Um, I don't know. I've only played for I, 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 I think I think of that and the like Rune of Senthoi is like the big like dispel like, unbinding like bonus setup. Um, yeah. This looks similar. This looks similar similar to what Jeremy brought to um. Uh, which who's it? Battle for all, Battle to end Alzheimer's, which he won. Okay. He he did best. Yeah, well. his looks like a similar really list. Like it yeah. was. Zytrix, the spell you get an extra spell and everything, right? That's why he has so many spells. I think so. Yeah. Although he does have warlord, so that might be the warlord battalion thing. Uh, okay. Yeah, I, he's I warlord and green acolytes. So he's like a seven drop. I'm hoping that yeah. he plays all of these aggro lists and they just make him go first and shove into him. I hate all <laughs> um, next team, you're up. Yeah, yeah. So then we've got the hot dogs. Um, we've got Bob with Seraphon. So this is uh, Dracotheon's tail. So it's Starborn. Uh, he's got a Slan, Croak, an Astrolith Bearer, and a Starseer. Uh, five. Source Guard, 10 Skinks, 10 Skinks, 6 River Dactyl Riders, and 6 Agrodon Lancers. So this is not quite the min-maxed casting setup. He doesn't have... Well, it's not at all the min-maxed casting setup, actually. He doesn't have any endless spells. Um, and he's got, you know, a reinforced unit of Lancers and Ripper Dactyls, which is unusual to see in Starborn. Um, so I like it, <laughs> because it's not the max bullshit Starborn list. Um, yep. Is that that means it's probably not the best thing you can bring, but that is fine. Um, he's a two drop. 
Uh, we've got Chris with Night Hunt. So this is, I think we have two Night Hunt lists here. So this is the second one. Uh, very similar. Very yeah. similar, yep. So it's Scarlet Doom again. Um, with two Cruciators, uh, two Spirit Torments. Not the fifth hero in this one. And then this is 3x20 Blade guys. So they're all doing Mortals on the charge. Uh, and then 3x10 Chain Rasps. So instead of the Hex Wraiths, it's got Chain Rasps. And then 2x4 uh, Banshees. So I don't think the other one had any Banshees. So the other one is very weak to casting. And they probably want to keep it away from like Seraphon or something. Uh, yeah, the other one, one did have a Guardian Souls though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the other one had the Guardian Souls. So the other, this one does have a Mage. The other one had at least had one Mage, which is not nothing. But yeah, it's they're, they're both not the yeah. best uh, versus Magic. Yeah. yeah. Um, so any continuing on uh their third player austin has stormcast eternals and excelsior with the celestant prime uh three judicators with griffhounds the one nuke vexilor with meteoric standard and then the lord imperitant um similar to nick has the master of magic arcane arcane tome combo with the everblaze comet um i did not realize until i faced someone with the comet for the first time the comet is 36 inch range so you can cast it from outside of unbind range to guarantee your um you know your magic dom but still have an offensive spell go off which i hate it's absurd yep. <laughs> it's crazy good um so then he's got three annihilators with grand hammers two by five liberators a chariot and three raptors with long strike crossbows so all of that well other than the fact that i don't have um liberators um all of that is very similar to like something I would run <laughs> with the long strikes and the chariots, um, but yeah, this is this is like not as extreme of a list, not as skewy as Nick's. Um, so he's got a little bit more just bodies and shooting and stuff that's not all focused on dropping mortals on your brains. Uh, and he's in, he's got double command entourage, so that's why he has. What did he get for double command entourage? Oh, he got that's that's right. He has he has all of the holy commands. He has call for aid, so he can bring back a unit of liberators. He has steadfast march, so once pregame something can run and charge, and he has thunderbolt volley to double shoot the raptors. Um, yeah, that's a good all rounder list. Uh, then we got James with Feck in Hollowmorn with uh, one arch regent, one gore warden, a Vargulf courtier, and a marrow scroll herald. Um, the courtier is a priest with the charnel vestments. Uh, the arch regent has fever of scholar, which I think is plus one to cast and unbind. He's got two by sixty crypt ghouls, <laughs> three horrors, three more big knights, and three flares. So this is just this is just bodies. This is just bodies, bodies, bodies. Um, I hope that. <laughs> um, I don't know. This is the kind of thing where I'm like, I think that. I can chew through 120 goals, <laughs> but I guess I would find out. Um, yeah. And it's a... Well, I think it's a two drop, because I think he has one extra... His one more unit can fit. Uh, no, it doesn't have an asterisk next to it, but I think it's supposed to be... One, two, three, four. I think it's supposed to be a two drop, because he has one too many heroes for a battle reg, and then... I think all of the units should fit. He's also in Hollow Morn, which I don't think is correct, so I'm going to let Gene. Yeah, there's yeah. there's a comment on it that's saying, hey, is this supposed to be Hollow Morn? Because it does essentially nothing for you. No judgment if so, but um, yeah. yeah, we'll see. Uh, and then finally, Mike with Corn. Is this the only Corn? This. I, uh, I was very surprised that there wasn't not, any more Corn. There might I be one more. more. All right. But we'll learn. Yeah, so it's Gortide with a Blood Secretor, Corgos Cool. I love this list already. Valkia the Bloody, a Slaughter Priest, and a Ritualist. Uh, 20 Blood Warriors, 10 Skull Reapers, and then 2x10 and 1x20 Blood Reavers, and 3 Mighty Skull Crushers, and the Wrath Axe. Um, so this is by no means like an optimal corn list, I don't think, but it's still corn, and it still does shenanigan corn things. <laughs> I mean, it's a good blow up so, on you, so it's yeah, just, you know, yeah, no. kind of pair... Up alongside the flesh eater corpse if you don't have a great way to like go into a horde of things and come out the other side it's gonna be annoying you know yeah. i just know uh, like in my head i'm like blood reavers are just so squishy but i guess 
you're wanting them to blow up and then just do mortals to whatever killed them. So <laughs> that's fine. By the way, there is, there is another corn list that's the more traditional monster, you gotcha. know, unfair yeah. fury and all that. And it's Ryan, not Sam Gould's brother. So gotcha. Um, yeah. I've never seen Valkia. I don't know. I don't know what she Me neither. does. I love progress cool with his like eight inch pylon. Um, yeah. So yeah, that's that. They're all. They're basically all combat lists. Um, the Stormcast has a very little bit of shooting, and I mean, I guess Seraphon is you know it's casting magic, but it's even the even the Seraphon list is more fighty right off the bat than the normal Starborn list with the Agronons and the Ripperdactyls and whatnot. Um, yes, yeah. so I mean yeah, I'll say the trend continues. Like yeah, yeah, no, like, I really like the Night Haunt list, the Seraphon's always scary, and, like, the Corn list, if, you know, that's a lot of mortal, you know, blow-up damage, and 120 bodies, like, the team's definitely not, not pushover, I, I definitely respect nope. these lists. And I'm, I'm actually, I'm super happy to see people just, like, taking slightly off-meta picks and stuff in their lists, like, you can, you can go 20 or 30% off the meta and have a, have a little bit of a different list and have some fun, especially at the end yeah. of an edition, so. Million percent agree. All right, damage ink. Yeah. Uh, so Madigan, she is a rules judge. Uh, so she know her from the team channel, and I've seen her, I think, at every winner. Um, and every day person. posting on AOS Coach. And every day, yeah. The infamous rules master. Yeah, you know her her, her vast rules knowledge going to help her with this seven unit OBR list. <laughs> but um, no, so it's the same ones before that. I don't know how it works, but good gut on you. Good luck. Uh, then it has a Legion Knight Soulbite with Ryan, um, Manfred, a Necromancer, King Morlock, Verlon, a Vampire Lord with Horror Frost, a White King with uh, Morbeg's Claw, 20 Zombies, 10 Dire Wolves, 20 Graveguard, 10 Graveguard, 3 Bellbats, 3 Bellbats with the Sons of Velmorn, obviously, going with it. Um, and it has a bunch of Battalions, Wizard Finders, and Dorian, Battle Reg. Yeah, so really, lots of drops. no idea. Uh, but... So I said lots of drops. And then yeah. I was going to say I have um, I have PTSD from Tony Graveguard killing things, so <laughs> I'm I mean, still I'm still graveyard. scared of it. Yeah, it's not bad, and like I'm sure I don't know what these heroes do. I mean, I know what Manfred does, but I don't quite know what the other ones. I mean, yep. I guess it's Necromancer, you know, yep. King Morlock. I, I don't know. I, I think it's one of those lists that might have a gotcha in it, but yeah, I kind of I kind of like I, I kind of like the Sons of Elmorn and King. The, the what King do they dude. do? I. Let me let me look it up real quick because I can't tell you right off the bat. Also, I'm, while I'm looking that up, I just I want to reiterate: no, we're not no disrespect to Madigan. Just that is the exact same um, OBR list as we had looked at previously. Um, yeah. So we we kind of like we we quick mentioned that as we skipped past it. I just wanted to make sure. Um, yeah. We gave some quick do to that list. Um, so, Mister Velmorn, Velmorn and Sons. Um, so he's yes incorporated um so he's you know whatever he's a he's a white hero he's got five damage two attacks and if he rolls a six to hit it's two mortal wounds um he can issue a command every turn to his sons without a command point being spent and at the start of the combat phase for each sl each slain model from the unit of the sons um holy within 12 of the king on a four up he can return a slain model so he's bringing them back as they die uh there's four models in the unit of the sons um they're wound two each except one has four wounds so it's math it's 10 wounds on a what does four it do save well? like if and, to simplify, yeah, why, why is this where yeah i had the the, the special rules on the Suns is um, at the start of the combat phase, you can pick an enemy unit within an inch and roll a die on a two-up. That unit can't make pile-in moves. So you can tag something with them and then just like hold them up forever. It's, it's, it's kind of like a... I guess it's kind of like a discount Sloppity by Hellpiper, right? Yeah. Like this is this one unit, you can get into the edge of something scary and just make it not pile-in. And you can also... Um, once per, at the start of the combat phase, they can also say that they are not going to pile in, and they get a three-up safe characteristic instead of a four-up. So they can just be a little bit tanky and tag something, and hopefully like pin it down. I think is the idea, and just tar pit it, and like gotcha. the king can be bringing back the models. 
I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I just see how this it's cool. Does versus, like Iron Jaws, but it seems like it might be good versus uh, something like my list, where there's like you know it could just be tagging things and kind of like yep. flying around the back of man. For yeah, them. I, th- I think you just have to. Obviously, if they, if they get charged and the things don't don't need to pile in, they'll just get smoked. But like if you can get them into something, yeah. Cool. I do wonder why he didn't try and prioritize getting a second block of 20 Graveguard in. I feel like 40 mm-hmm. Graveyard might have made more sense. But um, All right, moving along, we have Fred, who I played on TTS recently. Uh, he was using Fire Slayers, but he's playing LRL, who I hate, and Illumnia, <laughs> Spellcasting Savant, Calgrave with Eclipse, the stupidest spell in the game, Cathalar with Blizzard, great. Everyone's going to love Fred. Avalonor, yep. Big Cow, I think, right? Yeah, he's got the special character, Big Cow. Yeah, yeah, Light of Ethereum, Super Brawler, 30 Wardens, a 20 block and a 10 block. He's got five Blade Lords and then three Endless Spells, Rune of Petrification, Grave Tide, Twin Stones, uh, and the Shrine. And then he's got two units of Dawn Riders, and this is a yep. War Drop because it's Acolytes plus Battle Ridge. Yep. Um, I'm sure it's good, but I hate LRL. <laughs> yes. so that's all I got to say about that. Yep. Great. Um, there we got the Skaven. Skaven uh so he even won worlds so clearly it's op um he's got a grace seer with shaman the chillians cute thing you could have done this tournament is give one person blizzard and another person shaman i think a lot of teams learned that that was probably a good way to go about this to get yep. two blizzards on the team yep. um you got zach who has uh grace here with death frenzy grace here on screaming bell with death frenzy grace here on steaming bell with skitter leap Plague Priest with Disease Disease, Plague Priest on Furnace with Rabid Rapid. They're both on Furnaces, I, yeah. I messed that up. Uh, you got a Plague Seeker, you got 40 Clan Rats, so two blocks of 20. And then a, another block of 40 Clan Rats, that's a single block to fill out the battle line. Um, 20 Plague Monks and then five Sensor Bearers. So basically 80 Clan Rats plus 20 Plague, uh, plague Monks and the two Furnaces are going to be quite scary with Quicksilver Swords. Um, just a lot of kind of a hammer and anvil type thing there mm-hmm. the what, are, the what do the furnaces do that scary furnaces do do put out some um damage like some mortals when you're in combat with them and then uh outside of that i think the plague monks next to them get some sort of a buff as well if i believe and gotcha. they have curse which is yep. always good I don't um, know. i'm just happy to only see five sensor bearers yeah the sensor <laughs> bearers are the scariest thing because sure. much, much like the grave guard 15 sensor bearers i have ptsd from and five is much less scary they can still do some yeah. damage, but like it's not as scary. <laughs> yeah, this, this list can definitely abuse you. One, if you don't have a good way to clear bodies, and two, if you don't have good target prioritization, like if you just need mm-hmm. to eat it. So I think it'll actually do pretty well in this tournament where a lot of people are playing melee. Yep. Um, and then lastly, they have a Slaves Darkness list. I'm glad Slaves is super popular in this tournament, which is great. It is. It's not really popular. I mean, it's a popular, it's a popular faction in general, I think. Just maybe yeah, I own play it, but just I don't the play it because it's not good. Yeah. <laughs> or wasn't good. Mm-hmm. Um, it's Chaos Sorcerer Lord uh, with Slanesh and Levitate and Demonic Speed because Kabbalah, there's a bunch of spells. Another Chaos Lord, Undivided, Bind Damnation, Chaos Conduit to try and farm that Grand Strat. It's a Demon Prince with Nurgle, Flaming Axe, Conqueror's Crown, your standard yep. Demon Prince kit. And it's the monster um, one. It's the general and it's the monster. Yeah. I turn my troll into a monster. I turn my demon princes into monsters. If that's a command trait, I'm taking it. Uh, five chaos knights with corn. Ten warriors with Nurgle. Ten warriors with Nurgle for the battle line. And then everyone's favorite, ten chosen with Slanesh and the banner of screaming flesh and six corn Varen guard. I mean, yeah. pretty similar to your list, to be honest. With it you. is, yeah. The Varen guard, the chosen, um, the demon prince of Nurgle to turn off wards. The two um, blocks of warriors. Yep. I mean, shit, it's it's basically me. You and Rowan probably should just hang out all weekend. Yeah, this probably. I don't like... I don't really like the five corn knights, just because I've tried having one or two units of five corn knights before, and they just are sad. They make me sad. <laughs> Four ups to hit yeah. is, always, is always depressing. Um, yeah. Moving on to the next one, I cannot believe that another person's taking the same OBR list. There has to be an inside joke. Remember. This it must it must just be like the it has North, to be an inside joke. this has to be yeah. the New England OBR meta, or they all colluded on AOS Coach Chat and decided this is the best OBR list right now. Or 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 like Madigan did it, and everybody else saw well, this, that she did well with it and copied it. I don't know. 
Oh, Madigan, at least to Praetorians, he's taking Nomiri. I mean, why make the switch? At a certain point, if you're all running the same thing, why yeah, would you know. make the switch? Is it a date? Is it a research? Are they all going to, like, grid this at the end? <laughs> I don't I need to know. Un unclear. Um, this also... I forget, were the other ones... That, did the other ones have Acolyte Battalion? Or were they Wonder Ops? Uh, well, I guess they can't, they... it can't be Wonder Ops because it's got four heroes. So it might they might all just be three drops. Okay. Um, anyway. Yeah, it's the same OBR list again, which surprises me. I don't know. I just don't own Catacross, so I wouldn't run it. <laughs> Maybe it is the best OBR list right now. Um, yeah, then we've got yeah. Derek with Seraphon, uh, with Starborn and Fangs, Croak, Astrolith, Star Priest, Star Seer, Slan. Stop me if I say anything you haven't heard before <laughs> in Starborn lists. Uh, five Service Guard, ten Warriors, ten Rapidon Chargers. That is actually unusual um four ripper dactyl riders does that mean that the unit was that other unit six or eight i thought i saw a unit of six ripper dactyls all right let me you keep going I'll was there yeah, one that was, was double six. reinforced uh reinforced or is this just six i don't think it's possible to have four ripper dactyl rider riders all right I'm anyway. gonna look it up on the red app. <laughs> sure. Uh, then he's got Quicksilver Swords and Grave Tide and the Realm Shaper Engine. Uh, he's got Acolyte Battalion, Warlord, so he's a bunch of drops. He's nine drops. Um, we've got a Stormcast list with the this is the um, the Army of Renown with Ionis um, and all the dragons. So it's Ionis who is great, although I haven't seen him making like a bunch of impact in the meta or anything like since he came out. Then we've yep. got a Knight Draconis. Uh, I don't know what these traits and things do, because I've never actually read the rules for this army of renown, <laughs> other than knowing Ionis' rules. Uh, and then it's three by two Storm Drake Guard and one single Storm Drake Guard. And that leaves him at a very awkward 1890 points. Um, mm. I would have loved to see, like, I don't, again, I don't know the army of renown rules. I would have loved to see one of the big dragons and, like, end up somewhere closer to 2000 points um but whatever it's some dragons it'll be fun uh yeah. ho hopefully they're pretty dragons <laughs> uh we got devon with cities of sigmar can you look up what settlers gain is because i actually don't remember the um the free city uh while i read this so he's in settlers gain i don't know what that does we'll find out in a moment here banners held high is the grand strat uh, he's got the Marshal on the Griffin with the Sigmarite Warhammer for... Ripper damage. Dactyl's coming in units three, by the way, also. So this is four Rippers, not... This is three, not four. If this guy puts a fourth Ripper on the table, immediately call a judge. We're disqualifying him. <laughs> I'm, I'm actually just going to leave um, a comment right a comment. now. Yep, since I'm live on this. I was like, if I accidentally mess up this document live on stream and ruin it for everyone, I'm going to be so embarrassed. But also you can just undo <laughs> so it's not that big a deal uh set works game three all right i have commented i have let them know that they are yeah, the worst they are the worst I, they are I, I a cheater that yeah <laughs> i'm throwing uh, it off the table i'm putting it right in the water like yep fish. yep we're punting it into the water um anyway back to cities what did you say settlers game does so, I'm struggling. I should have just gotten to Wapedia, but it looks like it does something with allies. Just give me one second to read this. Mm, all right. I'll, you should have just gone to the site that shall not be named. I'll finish reading the list then, if you're not ready yet. Yeah. So, it's the Marshal of Griffin, Galen Van Dance, a sorceress with Tenebrial Blades, which is turn off its Ren Infinity, essentially. Uh, a okay. sorceress with Blizzard and an allied Venari Banner Blade. Um... 10 Dread Spears, 30 Black Guard, 20 Black Guard, Duralia Van Denst, um, who also counts as like a leader for giving orders, I think. Uh, 10 Executioners, Command Corps, and then 5 Allied Dawn Riders. Um, this is a bunch of drops. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. The Sorceress is trying to give infinite rend to 30 Black Guard and just blend things, I guess, is the plan here, mainly. Um, probably plays objectives pretty well um yeah settlers gain something with the um with like lumineth allies well it's you get the city of warners keywords okay uh you can choose one extra free guild hitter uh, 
the armies um you, you can ally hot hish which is lrl stuff um and you don't take battle shock when you're near uh when you get i guess with an 18 of a hero and one in four gets to be lrl in addition to the one for their stormcast so wait where are you seeing the battle shock thing all i'm seeing is add what I see is add one to casting rolls for friendly settlers gain wizards, and at the start of the hero phase you receive an additional command point if your general is within three inches of a Lumineth hero. The command ability, Alvin Training, you can pick this at the start of the battle shock phase. You so one settlers gain LRL hero, does not take battle shocks or friendly free gold free gold. So it's probably the casting thing that matters, not this battle shock thing. Just, yeah. just ignore that. And an extra command point. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Alright, sorry. But anyway. Interesting. So I, so I guess that's that's what the banner blade is for. The banner blade is going to stand next to the um, the general and just be an extra command point. Uh, so then, last on this caster's anonymous, we have Sean with uh, orc war clans. This is a big wog instead of iron jaws. So it's got gobsprack, a foot mega boss with destroyer, two war chanters, a weird knob shaman, and the Burgog prophet to zap 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 something. Uh, then it's got two by ten ard boys and five brutes as battle line six brute ragers and six pigs as the rest to fill it all out and this is it's got acolytes warlord it's a it's a bunch of drops um, yeah big was yeah. good man it farms it is. well yep yep and got God uh, spread. You, it can boogie to you yep um, <laughs> no i mean i think this team's good i think the black guard are really scary uh, especially are. like if you have to combat them i think all yep. dragons is obviously always good with ionis and they got it's a good list. Everything other than Oscar and the troll OBR thing, which is the best <laughs> list. I don't know. Yeah. I, I feel like, I don't know. I, I Again, I don't know the army of renown rules, but I feel like that um, dragon list is just so light on bodies that yeah, it's going to suffer. Um, but we'll see. All right. The end times was an, were an inside job is the next team we're looking at. Um, LRL list, it's Zytrek, it's got Teclas in it, our first appearance of him, Light of Lotharian, second appearance of him, her. Um, we got Wardens, Blade Lords, Dawn Riders, Alarith of the Mountain. So it's 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 basically three heroes making up 1,400 points of this list, 1,500 points of it. So uh, it's going to play Plain Hero Hammer a lot, if you know what those three do, and then Rune of Petrification. Yep. Um, and five Blade Lords hiding down at the bottom. Oh, there we go. And then uh, the Cathalar has total eclipse. So, I mean, if you don't have a good way to stop magic, this list can be very impressive. I'll yep. say that. But it doesn't. And it's a one drop. Yeah. So it's not bad if you have a way to nuke Teclos fast, or you know, if you're playing, I don't know, Cruel Boys, maybe it'd be pretty easy to beat up on this. Yeah. Um, next up, KO. It's uh, rules guys, Urbaz. We got Navigator, Admiral. Company, Thunderers, and Ringers, Ironclad, and Gotrek. All right, I used to play KO, and I would do two Ironclads with Gotrek. So this is one Ironclad with Gotrek, but I mean, he I can't go in the Ironclad anyway, right? <laughs> no. So basically, what you do in a list with KO and Gotrek is Go is Gotrek kind of runs up the middle by himself, and then mm -hmm. one flank is held down by the rest of the army, and yep. it's pretty good if you don't have a good way to deal with that one flank. I, I want um, I want to play this so badly because all I've all I want to do before third edition is over is run my demon prince into Go Trick and turn off his ward save and run like ten chaos warriors into him and just smoke him <laughs> by turning yeah. off his ward save. It's all I want to do before the edition ends. Yeah, yeah, that would be that'd be awesome. I'll be I hope in the new edition he's still like a badass but doesn't have like the oppressiveness of the three up like reduce all damage thing mm -hmm. and like. On I don't know. He's always been an interesting magic missile for 500 points. Yeah. Um, so then the next was Sylvaneth, Heartwood again. Speaking of Ariel. Hammer. Yeah, another, yeah, basically Mike and uh, Graham just yelling it together. Beard of Durthru, Alariel, Belthanos. So again, that's going to be about 14, 5, 1500 points. And then a unit tree at, uh, tree revs, a unit of dryads, a unit of dryads, a unit of tree revs, uh, and the ventral skull group. I mean, this list is pretty much... I have three things that are going to jam on you. That's yep. fun. Yeah, the tree revs um, are going to teleport around and cap objectives and do, like, surrender and destroy. The dryads are... They're very annoying to kill, actually. Like, I've, I've burned through them before, but it, they're minus one to hit and wound, if I'm remembering right. So, like, they're very annoying screens, and then smashy, smashy, big heroes, I guess. Because <laughs> smash yeah. things. 
Absolutely. And then there with his, is then the next up is Ezekiel. I actually played him at Everwinter, so mm -hmm. pretty cool. Get to see him again. He runs a shop, I think, in New York and Brooklyn. Nice. Uh, Sorcerer Lord with Arch Sorcerer, Chaos Familiar, Undivided, Chaos Lord and Demonic Mount, Nurgle. Um, and he's got 10 Chosen and Corn with the Banner of Rage. 10 Chosen. He ran double blocks of Chosen versus me as well up there. Yeah. Nurgle, Eroding Icon. Uh, 10 Knights, Nurgle. Um, 20 warriors he he does he did do the 20 warriors versus me too um with nurgle again this list is really good if there's just two objectives it's going to stand on them well yeah. um less good when there's play. so many objectives on some of the battle plans i guess but and it's yeah. in host so all of those chosen knights and warriors can rally in five ups too is the other thing yeah so it's not bad yeah not bad it's a lot of meat a lot yep. of armored meat yep <laughs> a lot of a lot of three up save wounds to uh go stand on points <laughs> And then last up is Bart. Uh, he's also doing Starborn. Um, he's doing Lord Croak, Soros, Slon, Skink, Warriors, Guard, Chargers, Chargers, three endless spells. I don't know. I, do I really need to lead nope. Starborn lists? We know nope. what they do. <laughs> um, I think that's the last Starborn list, though. I believe Thank the God. rest of the... I, I think the rest of the Seraphine we're going to see are coalesced. Uh, so we okay. already did ours. Fifth edition mindset. I'm excited to meet these guys because I have lived in a 5th edition mindset since 1999. Um, and I want to pull out my what else now. <laughs> uh, so, curious to talk to these guys. I already like them, just from the name. Uh, they have a Hallowheart list with uh, Warforger, with Blizzard, Levitate. They have Callus and Toll, the new, the new thing. Uh, Zenestra, Talia Vedra, which I love because I feel like she should be good, and I haven't seen her, and I want her to be good. Uh, yep. A battle mage, and then a second warforger is the general, um, with divine champ, which turns him into a priest. So he's got curse, um, and has maester of the Vetti's macroscope, which I th I thought that buffed range on shooting. I, I guess that's for the wilder core hunters. Um, so we've, he's got a reinforced unit of the hunters uh, for battle line with two by ten steel helms, command core, tolls companions, and then five cavaliers. Um, I think it's a solid little list. I really like cities, just in general. Twenty-two wild corp hunters. I like. I want to see what that does. <laughs> they they're decent shooting, and I think they they benefit from cover in some weird rent way. Like I think they get rent if they're in cover on their shooting, and they maybe they're not visible or something. Um, we got another slaves list. So I think the most represented factions are slaves and Seraphon at this, um, which is interesting. I, agree. I mean, Seraphon's not super shocking, especially in a team yeah. tournament, but. Uh, so this slaves list is Knights of the Empty Throne. Um, mm, I'm sorry, Eddie, but I feel like this was my most questionable slaves list I read. So this is Bellicor. I mean, Bellicor is never bad. Um, and then two sorcerers. One has Spite Tongue to Curse and Horfrost. One has Master of Magic, Chaos Familiar, Chaotic Conduit, and um, one is Slanesh, one is Undivided. I feel like he's missing a spell. He's got Warlord, which I assume is an extra spell, but he only has one spell on the second Sorcerer Lord. Um, so maybe I'll make a comment about that. But anyway, so Battle Line, 9 Untamed Beast, 9 Corvus Cabal, 2x3 Varengard of Corn with Spears. And then he's got 10 Chosen um, of Slanesh with the Banner of Screaming Flesh, 6 Furies, and 1 Cockatrice. And actually, having just said it's my least favorite slave list, um, I don't think it's bad, actually. It's just a little weird to go um, Knights of the Empty Throne when you only have 2 by 3 Varengard as your mounted things. Like, uh, yeah. three, 2 by 3 Varengard is just like, I don't know. It's, it's way less scary than 1 of 6, I think, although, I don't know. It, it's just, you're not, you're not taking back advantage of your Knights of the Empty Throne-ness, right? Like, I would have, I would have almost expected 2 by 6 Varengard and Knights of the Empty Throne. Or throw some lights in there or something. Is that, is that, you know, he needed he wanted to use them as the battle line. Sure. Element. That's yeah, that's but, fair. Yeah, this this could just be like, a, oh, I want to play slaves at this team tournament, and this is what yeah. I own. Kind of yeah. list. It's still it's got you know ten shows of Slanesh are no joke. I do. I've I've run the cockatrice before just to try and keep the chosen alive. Um, Furies are always nice. It's got I don't know. It's got play. I just don't think it's the strongest. Um, yeah. And that is in, I feel like he's, no, I guess, it, yeah, it's a bunch of drops because it's just a Warlord Battalion. 
and that that must be an extra spell. Uh, so then we got Jerry with Maggotkin. I think it's the only Nurgle we have with Glotkin, who just drives me up a wall. The great unclean one. I love I love the double big big fat boys. Uh, and then a Rotbringer Sorcerer, five Blight Kings, ten Plague Bearers, ten Plague Bearers, uh, three Nerglings, and two Puscoil Blight Lords, all in a battle regiment. Um, so it's a one drop. Um, Good list. Yeah. I kind of wanted to play something like this, actually. Yeah. Um, Glocken is I just always would've... a huge pain, even without the Slappity now. Yeah. And uh, I think I think I probably would have switched it to the Blight Kings into something else, but still yeah. not bad. I worry about this not having enough damage. There's nothing in here that's like very killy. Like this isn't right. this isn't the Glotkin list with all of the big monsters, uh, yeah. like Orgot and Bloab and stuff. So I like none of none of the battle line things do damage. Two Pusco of Light Lords is not like gonna run over things or even be that hard to kill. Honestly, I mean Glotkin and Unclean would are big piles of wounds. Um, and, I was thinking and it has some summoning. A, yeah, I was thinking this team might be more of a fun team. It might be. Their it might be. It's pretty nasty. <laughs> so yeah, so then we got KO, Slaughter of Sorcery, in Barak does something, uh, with a chemist with spell in a bottle and the Admiral. So this must be the 2x15 Thunders. Right. Oh yeah, and then the Rune Lord also with like the thing that buffs the shooting. So yeah, so yeah. this is the Ironclad. Right, Ironclad. Yeah, we've all seen this list. Soul Scream Bridge, Ironclad to put... Two by fifteen thunder is in position and just shoot things. Um, I don't know. I hope Steve plays this and screens well so that thunders can't do anything and then he kills him. <laughs> we'll see. Um, yeah, it's the standard max thunder KO list, really. And then we've got our first coalesced Seraphon um, in Quaddle's Claw, of course, because the other one nobody plays anymore. Uh, with an Astrolith Bearer, the Troglodon, which I didn't appreciate, is real annoying. It's an aura of yeah. minus one to hit. Um, a Slan, an Old Blood on Carnosaur, and a Star Priest. Um, 20 Saurus Warriors, 10 Saurus Warriors, and 6 Croxcore Warspawn. Um, with Wizard Finders and Warlords, so a bunch of drops. Um, I lost recently to a Coalesced list with 9 Croxcores, which were scarier than I expected, but obviously 6 are less scary than 9. Um, 20 Saurus Warriors in Coalesce is going to be very hard to shift off wherever they are, so like that's definitely good. Um, I feel like this is a little heavier on heroes than it needed to be, and it might have been nice to have a little bit more, like one more unit of just bodies. Like, I, I don't know, drop, drops, I don't know, drop something and get another, even just another unit of like 10 Saurus Warriors might be might have been good we'll see i don't know it's, it's not a bad list yeah uh, i mean i i feel like night haunt and seraphon kind of put in coalesce kind of play similarly like mm -hmm. they kind of have some debuffs they kind of do like, they're pretty tanky they can hit yep. medium they just don't have mortal wound output and they're right. kind of susceptible to mortal wounds so it's that's yeah. why they've kind of been at yeah. bay this edition because right. the name of the game is kind of like do you have a crap ton of bodies or do you do a lot of mortals yeah. it's kind of for sure so. and like the carnosaur is just like very swingy on the damage um yeah. like from the mount like the five damage attacks but you know you're hitting on like a four up or something it can be very swingy um the sotex gaze artifact that is the turn off um turn off one or two wound things contesting like the slaves um huh. artifact so like the old blood can just kind of run off and hold a point by himself if he needs to um so yeah i don't know there's there's some fun things about this list and i do love seeing coalesced instead of starboard i kind of want to play yep. coalesced at some point we're going to uh, stick with it. Yeah, next edition, I think you'll be able to. Um, so, K-Town Killers, we got two teams left. This is Sam Gould and Ryan Gould's team. Uh, not Gould. So, the Seraphon list for Coalesce, he actually is running Lord Croak in this one with the Ashworth banner. Um, he is running a Skink Star Seer. He's running six Lancers, six Crocs, five Guard, ten Warriors. Um, and then he's got five Hunters of Hochi and three Pterodon Riders. So, nice little um list here i think uh yeah it's always interesting to see croak inside I, of yeah i love this list yeah but i don't want to play against it because i was traumatized by croak um coalesced <laughs> at the last gt uh which i talked about in a previous video 
I, I had I had not appreciated at all Croak making things strike last, and he rolled the like seven or eight up every single time to make something strike last, and it was extremely painful. Um, this is this is a very similar list to that, except it's got okay, it's not that similar. <laughs> it's got Agrodon Lancers, um, which the list I faced didn't have um, six Crocs instead of nine, five Source Guard instead of ten. And he had a second unit of ten source warriors, I think. So it's a bit different. I love the yeah. I love the five hunters of Huanchi. I think they're a great little unit. They and are, yeah. I mean this list riders is definitely, are fast. Yeah. It, this list definitely kinda of plays fair, you know, in some ways. Like it's gonna have a good magic phase and obviously Co West can be super yep. annoying if you know, if you're not like putting out a bunch of more like yeah. single dot mortal. No, I, I think this is a very solid and fun list without being like super obnoxious in any way. The next one's Fire Slayers, Troy. It's like just what Fire Slayers has. It's like Greyford. Um yeah, he's it's not all, doing all the foot heroes. Yeah, it's Rune Father, Rune Smiter, Battlesmith, Exile, Battlesmith, Rune Master. Um Berserker Block, Berserker Block, both of those are reinforced. Is that two by uh, ten? Yeah. Um and then single berserker with shield with sling shields, mm -hmm. uh times two. Times, times three. three. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then Molten Infernoff Invocation and a single Berserker. Yep. Um, so, I mean, obviously the heroes are going to sit behind the Berserkers and it's going to be in a really annoying block with a four board that does damage and has all the silly... Unless you have a Nurgle Demon Prince and you run in and turn off all their ward saves and just murder, yeah. uh, murder a bunch of dwarves. <laughs> does this one have the, this doesn't have the Flame Keeper guy, though, so he doesn't get to do... I, I hate that Flame Keeper uh, thing. Where like, right, where he's, like, getting the souls or whatever, and then he, like... Yeah, them. and then it's, like, released, and it's this whole, yep, like, yep. tracking game thing of... Rain. I don't like it. Anyways, he does, he's not doing that because he's smart. And he's yep. drop. Um, <laughs> it's a bunch of dwarf next bodies. Up is Jack. Jack might also be on this podcast I listened to uh, with Miles. Oh, but... nice think so but uh he's playing Beast of chaos um if not sorry jack or miles uh he's got doom bull zangor shaman cygor gorgon gorgon bulgor this is quick yes. phrase you couldn't guess <laughs> with Love the it. chaos gargant and six deaths um while i do think it's troll i actually played something similar to nova and got four one so I, it's not that troll um at the end of the day listen if you have a doom bull and you have six bulgors that can like just barrel through a lot and <laughs> yeah right you're gonna delete can, something Right, and then the 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 Zeech guys on disc, like obviously that's a pretty good wave too. So it's yep. like, you know, even if the monsters are kind of situational dash trolly, like they're not awful. Yep. Um, and the, uh, the rest of the list is very very heady. And if it doubles your energy, yep. you're probably gonna die. So. Yeah, and I've always wanted Cygors to be good, just doing chip damage to wizards, <laughs> just for like yeah. being on the board. Uh, so I'm yeah. happy someone's taking them. All right, same here. And cool. last up, we have Ryan. Uh, the other horn list Mo monster mash so he's got scarbrand and he's got the unfettered guy and he's got the incense of rage and uh yeah he's got two slaughter priests both with which being cursed oh and blood sacrifice the other one is killer and strength and blood sacrifice and then just min battle line just two units of ten reavers and five flesh hounds and then two skull cannons and yeah three skull nice so I kind of like it. I think the skull crayons are good for clear clearing. Like, if there's that one small unit chaff you need to get around uh, mm -hmm. with the monsters, that could be good. And then uh, the skull crushers are nice for like kind of just fighting on a flank while the monsters kind of go deal with the other ones. So I was gonna say that the the fact that it's three skull crushers and not six like says to me that he's gonna use them smartly and not just jam them into the front of an entire army and hope that their two up save makes them stay there. Yeah. No, it is <laughs> so that bodes well. Yeah, exactly. It is a five drop, and it does have um, uh, a tough time with the turn one battle tactic, I'd say, without the mage. So he's going to really rely, and also the grand strategy is a slaughter of sorcery. Mm -hmm. So, you know, he, he's got to make up some ground, obviously, on that front, but I think he's got a good list for this tournament. You know, I think Steve would blow him up like Cruel Boys, but I think a lot of the, the list that just want to brawl, like, he, he's ready for that, you mm -hmm. know? Yeah. Um, and then lastly, we have Wyatt, uh, Slaves of Darkness again, host the Ever Chosen, Lord, Lord, uh, one with Blizzard, one with Chaos Conduit and Warp Reality, uh, and then no Chaos Lord on a Karkadrak, uh, Helm of the Oppressor, Great Elk Artifact, as we've talked about, 10 Chosen with Slanesh, 10 Knights with Corn and Banner of Rage, uh, Chosen have Banner of Screaming Flesh, 
10 warriors, Nurgle, Corbal, Splintered Fang, 20 Splintered Fang, uh, which he pointed at 100, but this is actually 200. The, there's, there's, a bug, some, there's a bug that's been showing up in a lot of this, which uh, is okay. that it, the app has not been showing points correctly for um, reinforced units. It's, it's, it's yeah. in a lot of the lists here. And this uh, list is a lot of drops, so... Um, and it's a cockatrice. It oh, and it's a cockatrice, right, right, right. That can sit behind the warriors. Um, yeah, so I would say in general this list might be maybe a little bit of the weaker compared to the other four on their team, but, I mean, I think that they're, overall their team's going to be a lot of fun to play against and, mm -hmm. you know, has some solid lists. Yeah, you, you said we had talked about the Helm of the Oppressor, but we actually have not. It's the other artifact. Oh. So this is the one that turns off... Um, Inspiring presence two. within three. Yeah. No, the other ones, the the Conqueror's Crown is um, stop things from capping points. Helm of the Oppressor is turned off uh, Inspiring Presence. So he's a corn too, so Carker Deck of corn going into something can definitely do a bunch of damage and then turn off Inspiring Presence and like clear screens and things. Right. It's fine. Um, right. I, I, I also kind of wanted to play 10 Knights of corn with the banner and... Yeah. Y'all talked me down from it. You were like, it's bad. So Well, I played it in a tournament. <laughs> one. The issue is, like, you have you play versus Night Haunt, and it's pretty useless, and you play versus, you know, just lists that can get quickly tag the corner of that block, and it's just so bad. Yeah, and it's a it's still four up to hit. <laughs> and then you're sad. All right. Yeah. Uh, so we can't read. Finally, last but not least, these are the this is the team you said that you were most worried about for our team to face. Um, yeah. So let's look at why. Um First up, we've got Miles uh, with Gloom Spite, Jaws of Mork with a Squig Boss, a Fungoid Cave Shaman, Scragrot, and Grincrack. Um, I feel like it's rare I see Scragrot and Grincrack in the same list lately, but cool. That may be um, now. Yeah, right. 2 by 36 Squig Herd, 20 Stabas is the battle line, and then he's got 5 Gobble Palooza, 6 Sneaky Snufflers, and the rest of Grincracks. Little dudes. So he's got Wizard Finders and Warlords, so he has a lot of drops, but this is the, you know, it's just. 70 squigs <laughs> running at you um which is terrifying um i know that i can chew through that many squigs um because we've played it before um eventually but it's scarier with grin crack um because doesn't he make them like fight on death or something I forget yeah the grin crack yeah exactly if you're within three of a unit it can fight on death so right. that's that's the big thing is um so it makes makes getting rid of those squigs much scarier <laughs> uh we've got the nub Another coalesced list. Um, it's an old blood on Carnosaur and Starseer are the only heroes. Then we've got two by ten Source Warriors, nine Agrodon Lancers, and nine Croxcore War Spawned, along with a Stegodon. I haven't seen one of those in a while. Uh, then we got Suffocating Grave Tide and three Terror Wings. Um, yeah, I'm just I'm just scared of coalesce in general with my list because all my hammers are damaged too, and I would be sad. Um, we got Iron Jaws and Iron Sons, which is interesting. I think that's a counter charge thing, is their faction ability. Um, two War Chanters, Mega Boss on foot with the Destroyer, Weird Knob Shaman um, with Great Big Green Hand and Shaman of Chilled Lands. Then we got 2 by 10 Brutes, 10 Ard Boys, and 2 by 6 Gore Gruntas, and 3 of Morgox Crushes. I have no idea what that is or what it does. I assume it's a little Warband thing. Yeah. Uh, we got Cullen with Flesh Eater Quartz with Gourmain, a Marrow Scroll Herald, an Arch Regent, Infernal Cordier, and a Haunter Cordier. Nine Crypt Horrors, which is scary. Um, two by 20 Ghouls, six Crypt Flares, and six more Beg Knights. Um, I feel like I've been somewhat convinced that two by three more Beg Knights is better than six, but it's a scary unit um, that will kill things. Um, like you said, it's a two it's good drop. When you can resurrect it and grow it. I mean, I think right. that's the. the, the I mean, you, know, you can also resurrect the three, right? And just bring him immediately back up to three. Yeah. So. I think if you're not running know. like 120 ghouls, I think this is another. This is the version of, of sure. Flesh Eater Corpse that I do yeah. like, though. Yeah, it, it's, it's scary for sure. That, that, that's not to say yeah. it's bad. I've just. I've, I've heard good arguments that two by three is nice. I'm surprised uh, they didn't run a second unit of six knights. They probably just didn't have it, but like with Cruel Taskmaster, mm -hmm. the old instance of it, more bag knights were pretty obnoxious yeah, right. in the six box. Yeah, because yeah. you, you mentioned in passing real quick, but just to reiterate, this is before the most recent um, FAQ errata. Battle scroll, war scroll, battle scroll, whatever. Battle scroll, there we go. Um, so we're not playing with the most recent updated points or the most recent rules changes. 
Uh, so yeah, then very last but not least is Evan with Soulblade. Uh, it's the Vamp Lord and the Zombie Dragon, which you have seen down on lately. Uh, and Neferata. Then we got 30 Skeletons, 2 units of Black Knights, uh, 20 Grave Guard, and 2 units of Fell Bats. So. This is actually really similar to what I wanted to run. It's almost identical to the list I had made, only instead of the... Um, instead of the Zombie uh, Dragon, you had Archon? It's, it's, uh, no, instead of the Zombie Eye Dragon, right, I had the new Regiment of Renown with the Morgas right. and the uh, Archai and uh, Archon. So it was yeah. almost identical outside of that, though. Um, so I hope this guy does well. <laughs> <laughs> Prove you right, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. 30 Skeletons is a lot to move. I assume that's what... Neferata's no rend is going to go on just to make them even more obnoxious to move. I don't know, or, or I guess it could go on the Grave Guard. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's. I mean, the issue with this list is really that Zombie Dragon is so bad for 480 points. Like, even in Legion of Blood, where he has a three up and, you know, yeah, right. all that, it's kind of a waste of a command trait. The command trait's not very good. Yeah. And like, it's just, it dies to, to mortal wounds. And yeah. It's was... like the rest of the list kind of falls apart without a vampire in it. Yeah. Yeah. Like, for me, I'm like, oh, I have two blizzards and chosen doing mortal wounds. Like, something, something will deal with this dragon, <laughs> I hope. Um, but you have two blood vampires, so, you know, if they get into croak or something, and it does ignore the bodyguard and the wards, so yep. it's not bad. So were, were you worried about this team largely because you don't think we have a great answer to the squig list? The squig list is definitely tough. I've played I've played it the last three tournaments, and it definitely is tough for pairings. You can just lead with it, and know it goes into everything pretty well. Yep. Um, it's lost a lot. I mean, from when it started, it's yeah, probably right. down <laughs> 500, 600. It's down, like, it's down two buff units for the squigs, right? Yeah. And I thought it struggled versus corn. Now it doesn't. There's not too much corn in this, but you know, if you can blow up that back line, the squigs by themselves aren't that scary. If you make them overextend, you know, yeah. it's the only two things that do things, you know, in the in the whole list. So yeah, you know, tactic can be an issue. But you know, I, I think the biggest thing here was this. Um, there wasn't a great matchup for our um, Stormcath player to potentially go into. I thought that they had a lot of good answers for that, and mm -hmm. it's always scary when one of your players has five bad matchups. <laughs> Sure. It's scary. So that was the one thing that we'll see. Though we do have a plan, I think, to deal with that, or and, and a matchup or two that might not be as bad as we think. So we'll yeah. see. Um, yeah. Well, but, thanks for yeah. going through all this with me. Good. Good to have <laughs> yeah, somebody else to read half the lists. Um, yeah, we won't give away all of our all of our sweet, amazing strategies before the weekend, since you're going to post Any this in trash talk <laughs> chat. Um, we did determine that every list not on our team is bad and terrible, um, and it must be played by dummies who, you know, are bad at Warhammer. So yeah, I was going to say hopes are high going in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So what what's your prediction for our team, and what and, and after we read the list, who do you think is going to win the tournament? Um, there are so many names here that I just don't. There, it, there's so many people playing here that I just don't know. So like, I'm sure there's like. I'm sure there's two teams with people I haven't heard of who are just like all really good and I've just never been at a tournament. Like I you know, I'm sure there's a lot of good people. I'm just saying I'm sure there's two teams with like people who are like killers who I just don't know about, right? Um so I don't I don't have a good prediction just because like so many of these lists are like decent to good, but not yeah. like the most brutal list you can make with that faction, but played by a good player could be very good. Or it could be Joe Rando who just wants to go to a team tournament and have fun and like is bringing the models that he has, right? And might get wrecked four games. <laughs> so it's just hard to know not knowing anybody. Um, I think we'll win at least two rounds. Um, okay. I would be, sup I would be, I would be, sh I'd be shocked if we don't go two and two like as a team in rounds. Um, just because I think we've got, I don't know, we got some good lists and some good players. We're, we're also a team that's really good at outdoor activities. And yeah, activities. right. So like we're ready yeah. for like when this verges out beyond Warhammer. Right. So yeah. If 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 we need to do a tiebreaker fishing slash cornhole tournament, I think we're ready. Um, I, I I think a lot of this is also going to depend on how much honestly how much people are drinking <laughs> and who's yeah who who like wants to keep it a little bit in check and take the game seriously and who's just there to you know pound their 30 prepaid beers <laughs> so it, it that's just such a wild card i think it's hard to um i think it's hard to to judge who's gonna do super well 
Yeah, I guess with that in mind, then, how many wins between those three people playing the same OBR list will it be net? So 12 possible, over under seven. I mean, OBR is still just solid, right? Like, it's just a good faction. Um, I almost wish I brought my OBR just to play, be the one OBR player playing a different list, right? Um, I, best faction. I bet, yeah, right? Uh, no, I bet out of their 12 games, I bet the OBR wins... I bet they win seven. Okay. I bet I bet one I bet one of those three OBR person people go go one and three, just randomly. I don't know. I I I, I bet they like get stuck into bad matchups, because OBR is like a pretty good take all comers army, and I I bet they get like stuck with the bad matchups or something. <laughs> That's my prediction. Good prediction. Well, thank you for having me on the show. I do have to go. And, yep. Uh, I thank you for coming. Give me one. So great. We'll see I'll how it goes. It in Maryland. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll be wearing our obnoxious Maryland shirts. It'll be great. Thank you, Jake. Later. Take it easy. Bye. All right. Well, yeah. Thank you to Jake for coming on the show. Uh, we'll see, hopefully, some of you that listen to this uh, this weekend in Massachusetts. And I will definitely report back with a uh, recap of the tournament when I get back and uh, over my hangover. <laughs> you, you can tell what I'm expecting for this tournament. So, uh, yeah, take it easy, everyone. See you soon.